Let's talk Tobago. Our people, our places, our challenges and achievements, our needs and aspirations. Join us as we continue our journey into the future. Hello and thank you for joining us on Let's Talk Tobago. And I certainly hope that your Christmas preparations are well underway. In our stories this week, oil and gas are posing a threat to the agriculture and tourism sectors of this country, according to economist Dr. Vanus James. Tobago to maximize benefits of publicity gained from Anya Youngchi's Tobago Love Collection. 50 new luxury rooms for visitors just in time for the Christmas season. $95,000 distributed as private and public sector collaborate to honor small and medium-sized businesses. And an historic moment for Tobago as the first ever torch run is done around the island. Stay with us for these and more stories after the break. Breakers can trip, causing power loss to the entire house. Do not strip and insert wires into outlets. They could arc, causing damage to other appliances and start a fire. It can also cause your debt by electrocution. Be smart. Remember, fire and life safety begins with you. This is a message from the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service. Tobago is bigger than Trinidad if measured by international law. This according to Chief Secretary of London as he addressed the Business Outlook Conference. Now in its fifth year, the conference forms part of the Division of Finance and Enterprise Development's Finance Week. Secretary of the Division, Dr. Ansem London, said it was important to ensure that the private sector has a place in the economy. The key thing here is the role of, the, of government, generally speaking, and the private sector, and how we can work together to ensure that in the context of Tobago, the heritage is maintained and that the private sector does in fact have a place in this economy as we move forward. The reality is that when one looks at the country of Trinidad and Tobago and defines it according to international law, and one sees what Tobago brings to the country of Trinidad and Tobago, and you extrapolate from that what Trinidad brings, and you do the arithmetic, you would recognize that Tobago is in effect bigger than Trinidad using international law. Mr. London also spoke about Tobagonians having the right mindset and being aware of the opportunities available to them. So the point about it is that when you go to the table, you do not go to the table as a mendicant. You go to the table as a partner, an equal partner to sit down to discuss the business of the people. I'm also suggesting to you that your whole mindset as to what the opportunities are and how you relate to those opportunities, that whole mindset has to be determined by your definition of what your land heritage is, what your marine heritage is, and by, by extension, of course, what is Tobago. Economist and consultant Dr. Vanus James, as he presented on the Tobago Economy in Review, said that since 49 to 51 percent of the national economy is the petroleum sector, Petroleum exploration is an important activity for Tobagonians. However, he says this very success in petroleum can result in what he calls the Dutch disease. Government funnels funds into the national economy from petroleum taxes and a whole series of gifts and grants that the country will get. And government in doing so, creates a kind of problem for every other sector that accounts for why agriculture did not survive and why tourism is under threat. All over the world, it's referred to as Dutch disease in 
defined in the simplest way to mean that when petroleum is exporting well, no other industry can export well. That's in a kind of sense the story. Disneyland is not the only place offering a magical experience. Well, certainly not according to recent Project Runway winner Anya Ayongchi. According to Mr. Yongchi, Tobago Love, her final winning collection, was inspired by her visit to the picturesque village of Speyside. Mr. Yongchi copped the U.S. $100,000 first prize in the coveted U.S. show Project Runway. I actually went on my first diving trip ever uh, off the coast of Speyside, and that's what inspired me directly, aesthetically, the color of the sea. You can look at the, some of the clothes and see the palettes, you know, in very simple ways, it was an expression of the, the beauty um, of under the sea, particularly. Ms. Ayong Chi was speaking at a KGC call paid to Chief Secretary over London. She was accompanied by her sewing instructor, Tibigonian Delia Allen, to whom she has shown much gratitude. And it was in very much a, an ode to Delia as well, who instructed me um, the basics and the fundamentals of how to sew, which would, without which I could not have gotten to this point. And so thank you very much, Julia. The entire experience of working with Anya has been, you know, amazing. It has been, you know, I am, there's a sense of pride that, you know, I feel. And of course, the whole of Tobago. Mr. London said it was important for Tobago as a destination to maximize the potential for the fashion industry. We in Tobago who understand the importance of having a, a destination that is as varied as possible, I think that this is one area where we can commercialize, monetize those achievements and those talents, and also maybe make Tobago even more attractive to uh, visitors and, of course, uh, ensure that Tobagonians derive even more benefit. When asked whether being on an international stage, such as Project Runway, intimidated her, Mr. Yongchi said it never occurred to her. And to some extent, she felt a sense of superiority. It never really occurred to me, and I suppose maybe it never really does, that we are in any way inferior. So um, it just was very natural to be myself. And um, in so being, I think, in fact, if anything, we bring something so unique to the world stage that I feel somewhat superior <laughs> um, in that sense. So it never, it have never occurred to me that I was, uh, I should feel in any way less than, because I don't think by any stretch of the imagination we are anything short of, of the best. The Magdalena Grand Hotel is on schedule to open with its initial 50 rooms by end of November 2011. This according to Minister of Tourism, Dr. Rupert Griffith. I am very convinced that there will be opening and 50 rooms by the end of uh, this month, November 30th, and he gave the assurance that the remaining rooms will be open by the 9th of February. Sorry, the 9th of December. The minister was speaking at a recent media briefing after the Tourism Standing Committee meeting at the Blue Haven Hotel Bacolet. The minister announced that a committee has been set up to fast-track access by Tobago tourism stakeholders to the Room Upgrade Grant, the Loan Guarantee, and Tourism Development Grant. At the same media briefing, Secretary of Tourism and Transport Oswald Williams reported that Virgin Atlantic will resume flying to Tobago for the winter season of this year. The Virgin Atlantic flight has been confirmed, um, that second flight for winter. It's going to start on the 12th of December and it runs for the winter. Of course, um, if we can persuade them, if we can do enough to make those flights very successful, we may be able to bargain for a little bit more. Small and medium-sized businesses, also called SMEs, collected $95,000 in cash prizes at the Business Awards Ceremony of the Division of Finance and Enterprise Development. The ceremony took place at Mount Irvin Bay Hotel, where President of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, Tobago Chapter, David Wong, said SMEs are pivotal in any economy. It is your resourcefulness and perseverance, however, that have brought you here today and the Chamber is encouraged and invigorated in its work as advocates for the private sector and for business. 
SMEs are often touted as the backbone of any economy, creating jobs, opportunities, and revenue flow within its environs. The ceremony was the highlight of the division's finance week. Secretary of the Division, Dr. Ansem London, said the event represented efforts to revive the heritage of Tobago's businesses. This event is part of the larger effort to rekindle the heritage of business that is proudly Tobagonian. Let nobody fool you. This island has come from far, and that heritage of business and money-making and profit-making and wealth creation. Presenting the FITI address, Chief Secretary of London said there has been a subtle change in the mindset of Tobagonians over the years, which has contributed to a loss of individuality. There has been a subtle and to me unfortunate change in the mindset of Tobagonians over the last 30 or so years, where we have lost some of our individuality, we've lost some of our self-reliance, We've lost some of our capacity to maximize the opportunities that are available. And what we're trying to do during this period and with events like that is to really change that mindset and to shift the paradigm. He also indicated that he had no intention of isolating Tobago from the rest of the region or the world. We have no intention in the Tobago context to insulate or isolate Tobago from the rest of the country, the region, and the world. That is not our idea. And that is why we have no problem about Tobagonians partnering with business colleagues from Trinidad, from the rest of the region, even internationally. We encourage that. But I'm saying the mindset of the Tobagonian has got to be one that says, Heal, this is my space. I am here, and therefore I have a responsibility to benefit from that particular space. There were eight awards given out that evening, donated by the private sector, the Division of Finance and the Office of the Chief Secretary. Among these were the most innovative and outstanding business won by Anola De Freitas, Entrepreneur of the Year Alfred Melville, and the Chief Secretary's Award won by Alston Baker. From theatre spaces for up to 5,000 persons to retractable floors to accommodate masks and steel bands, by next year, the Chopin Cultural Complex promises to be the premier arts and cultural venue in the Caribbean region. This was the vision shared by the complex's six-member committee. Omodara Mills has the details of a stakeholder session held at the PRDI building in Scarborough. The four-level fan-shaped cultural complex will include a heritage library, theater spaces, conference and lecture rooms. Members of the Cultural Committee described other special features of the Cultural Center. The stage would be able to be broken down, stored away, and then we have the big open space, which would allow for movement of mass and through the... We do have the spaces that allow for um, simultaneous productions. So you could be in the main hall doing a 1,200 um, um, event, and somebody could be upstairs in the lecture room or in a black box doing a 150 um, attendees at, at the same time. According to Chairman of the Cultural Committee, John Arnold, creative, promotional, business and educational opportunities can be facilitated at the center, which will be commissioned in 2012. At the center, we would like to see um, a kind of performing arts um, school, so to speak that caters to the, the broad needs of uh, the whole of Tobago. The Committee for the Chopin Cultural Complex responded to questions such as, How are you all going to structure that uh, um, use of rehearsal space? You have a show coming up in the next three weeks. You can ask for rehearsal space time. That can be scheduled. The bamboo dance, how is, how is it going to affect the stage? Because it might scratch the stage and you have to be so careful with the kind of stage that you use. And how are you going to treat with those kind of things? The polyfloor would be able to, if you're working on the, on the floors, it would be able to withstand scratches, etc. And also the, the, the modular 
the modular floor, the, the material it's made of is highly resistant. So I, so I, I don't think we, sh we should have a problem. One cultural stakeholder shared his thoughts about the work done on the complex. I too feel very excited, maybe not as much as you do, but I know a lot of work has gone into this, just listening to you, and I'm really, really pleased to be here to hear this roll out. I am Umadara Mills for the Department of Information. There has been no measurement of the financial value of the Tobago Heritage Festival to Tobago's economy. Educator Walt Titus pointed to this as he addressed those gathered at the Works Conference Room for the fourth lecture series in the THA's 30th anniversary celebrations. Tobago's traditions and culture, with special reference to the Heritage Festival and its role in Tobago's development, was the topic up for discussion. Omodara Mills reports. In 1987, the THA authorized the establishment of the Tobago Heritage Festival with the intent to have the event represent Tobago culturally, be an educational tool, and an economic earner for the island. Presenter Royal Titus listed some of the guidelines set out by the THA for the Heritage Festival. It was to be an avenue for showcasing Tobago through the presentation of authentic folk and cultural forms in music, dance, literature, culinary arts, local craft in particular, this was the beginning. It was to be an eventual economic earner through tourism earnings and other entrepreneurial activity. According to Mr. Titus, there are several benefits of the Heritage Festival to Tobago, with the most important being its economic impact. I believe where the Heritage Festival has impacted most is where it has an economic impact. Unfortunately, we do not have any measurement of the true value of the economic impact. What could happen in the Tobago context? is that we could, of course, do a survey, interview everybody, and discreetly try to find out what kind of economic impact took place during the Heritage Festival. I am Umadara Mills for the Department of Information. With Christmas right around the corner, there's a tendency to go slightly overboard with a variety of food and drink readily available. However, senior nutritionist with the Tobago Regional Health Authority, Joanne Cruikshank, gives a few eating tips to bear in mind for the season. You know, you look at your portion, all right, there's nothing wrong in, in spurgeon, but at, look at your portion in the sense of your, your healthy selection. For instance, like for instance, like the Christmas dinner, you could have half your plate be vegetable, some raw, some steam. Try to, to, to make your plate in terms of high fiber, high fiber food, your ground provision, your fruit, your vegetables, your peas and your beans. You try to cut back on the meat, you try to, especially those who have hypertensive or high blood pressure, they try to cut back a lot on the, on the ham. Ms. Wukshank was speaking at one of the events held by the TRH on the Scar Report. The TRH is commemorating Chronic Disease Month with a series of activities as it promotes healthy eating and active living by encouraging persons to take charge of their health. I think it's very educational and something that's very beneficial to the community. I think it's a good initiative because you get to know about your status and all other things that could affect your body like hepatitis B and you know and then again to the brochures about syphilis and AIDS is very important about keeping yourself in a gear and knowing about you know, things that could affect your body now, you know, high blood pressure, HIV, AIDS. One of the key features was the bioimpedance machine, which determines body fat and body mass index, or BMI, a measure that indicates if you are the ideal weight for your height. Vital information such as height, weight, and age are entered into the machine to do the calculation. For women, their body fat should be less than 32% of their weight, and men, less than 25%. So, are Tobagonians expressing interest in their health? Yes, of course, we had a good turnout as usual. Okay, so people want to know their numbers, they want to know exactly what they need to do, how to, they could change their lifestyle, especially coming up to the Christmas season. 
We have like people with very high cholesterol level. We have people who were diabetic and wasn't even aware of their, that they are diabetic. And people just want to know their numbers on the whole. We go to a short break, but when we come back, we take in some beach football action. love to relax after a tough day at work. Don't let this be you. Avoid smoking when tired and in bed. This can start a fire or worse, contribute to your death. Be smart. Remember, fire and life safety begins with you. This is a message from the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service. Welcome back. What do agriculture, film, and fashion have in common? Well, they are all exciting avenues where young Tobagonians can have profitable careers. Various speakers at the Youth Business Forum encouraged over 70 young entrepreneurs to imagine the possibilities of being innovative business owners and help strengthen Tobago's economy. Omadara Mills has this report. A Youth Business Forum at the Mount Irving Bay Hotel was one of the activities held as part of Finance and Enterprise Week 2011. Radio personality and entrepreneur in the entertainment business, Jason Williams, advised those gathered that they should seek to improve their natural abilities by getting the right training and qualifications. Um, I put myself in place to obviously learn about the craft, which is most important in any discipline. Um, you might have the natural ability, the natural skill, might be able to sing, but it's good to have a little voice training. It's good to join a band, you know, get some kind of training so you could formalize this natural ability. Young entrepreneurs learned that farming is not the only profitable business in agriculture. Businesswoman Anola De Freitas shared her experience about the rewarding opportunity she has in making soaps, scents, and paper from plant materials. She revealed that making organic products such as these allows her to have a unique business. And I recognize that lots of the people doing the soaps were into the more scented soaps. They wanted to look good. And I want the same thing for my products. But in order to be differentiated, I, don't want, I want to stand out. I decided to look in the lines of herbal soaps that would give different benefits. Film animation and the fashion industries are also emerging markets which young persons can tap into. Animation lecturer at UTT, Ian Allen, said that animation now attracts both the young and the old. He also listed some of the attractive careers in the animation industry. Some of the jobs that you can immediately start once you come through the UTT program are illustrators. You can be an illustrator, you can be a storyboard artist, you can be a designer, you can be a rigger, a mod modeler, script writer, animator, colorist. You can even be a sound editor. Director of Designers United, Misha Trim, said that business persons can gain recognition by marketing their products through social media such as Facebook. Creatively using social media like Facebook and Twitter saw our popularity grow as well. If you decide on a creative career in the fashion industry, you also have at your disposal the same technology. This, if utilized well, can see a fast tracking of your brand and presence, in most instances, aiding in your success. 
We as young people need to be innovative. We need to be thinking outside of the box, going beyond what is the traditional business idea and really looking at something different. I am Omidara Mills for the Department of Information. Twelve teams competed for the U.S. $10,000 first prize in the Bago Sports Annual Beach Football, mainly sponsored by the Division of Tourism and Transportation. The competition took place at the Turtle Beach Heritage Park. The recently formed Bago Sports is a multi-sport company designed to develop and promote sports in Tobago. For two full days, Turtle Beach provided a hub of activity for locals and visitors as Bago Sports staged its second annual beach football competition. Teams came from as far as Florida and as near as Guyana and Jamaica. However, while local teams such as Tokyo Vale from Plymouth and Swarm Strikers displayed a variety of good skills and tactics, their raw talent succumbed to the Florida-based team, whose members were more mature in age and operated as seasoned and experienced beach footballers. The tournament was partially sponsored by the Division of Tourism and Transport as a way of supporting sport tourism in Tobago. Bago Sport is said to be committed to using sport as an avenue to achieve community development, awareness and empowerment. An Olympic-style event in Tobago, as a torch made its way through various villages in the island over the course of a few hours. This well-executed island-wide torch run saw the involvement of several young sport persons taking an active part in the THA's historical celebrations. Omodaro Mills reports. An island-wide torch run was the event aimed at making the entire island aware of the THA's 30th anniversary celebrations with a heavy participation from the youths of Tobago. From dawn, the torch run started at the Storby Car Park with Assistant Secretary in the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport, Huey Cadet. From Pigeon Point to Plymouth to Charlotteville to Scarborough and every village in between, the torch was passed through the hands of numerous young Tobagonians. The torch run ended at the Scarborough Esplanade where Dr. Elton Bob, chairman of the 30th Anniversary Committee, explained the symbolic importance of the event. People of every age, every ilk, and particularly Chief Secretary, the school children of this island, they took a sense of pride in lifting this torch and carrying it, you know, certain kilometers around the island. And I say, I am saying to you this evening, sir, that this is symbolic of the kind of enthusiasm that we can uh, get from our people as we forge our way towards economic, social, and spiritual development on this island. Chief Secretary of London stated that the torch run represented all the communities in Tobago being united by the efforts needed to develop the island. As we start on the next 30 years, I want us all to remember the lessons that came from today's celebration and today's event. That we have to work together as communities. That we have to ensure that we work together and contribute regardless of our station in life. Following the torch run, a cultural show featured performances by limbo dancers along with local calypso and soca artists. I am Omodara Mills for the Department of Information. We've come to the end of another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. On behalf of the Tobago House of Assembly and the Department of Information, thank you for watching our 200th episode. I am Avian Parks. Have a very blessed and safe Christmas season. See you next time. Make a list. He's checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's naughty or nice Santa Claus is coming to town He sees you when you're sleeping And he knows when you're 